being here with us as 16 Ounce Cinema presents Takishi Mike with myself, Mike, and Bjork. Say hello, Bjork. Hello, Bjork. I think you um, butchered the name a bit. Just a bit. I thought I, I thought it was Mike. What, how, how do you yeah, say? Yeah, but you also but- butchered his last name as well. <laughs> it's uh, well, Takashi just... Mike. Takishi Mike. That's what I said. No, you said Takishi. Oh, Takishi, whatever. It's that's different continental accents right there. I think uh, I think we got it. I think it here. it's a hint of racism, Michael. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> I guess it is, this podcast is to see which which are the most racist people, Americans or the British. And uh, my oh, money's on the British, to be honest. Call. Yeah, that's that's the only reason I think we're my doing money's the next, also uh, on the British. The next ninety podcasts, just for this reason. So, uh, Bjork, yeah, my why, are, also on the bridge. why are we doing this together? We are doing this together because we both love Takashi Miike, and it gives me an excuse to revisit his entire filmography again. Which I'd, I'd like to point out, you actually started and finished within a year since yep. last November, <laughs> and for some yeah, insane yeah. <laughs> reason, you're going to do it again, it seems? Yeah, I don't really have much going on, so why not? Yeah, yeah I didn't think you were going to um, re rewatch the movies. I thought it'd be like me rewatching the movies and then oh, just no kind of going. I have no, I had no I idea you were doing absolutely that. Absolutely love Mike, and I'll watch him any chance I get. Dude's a <laughs> genius. Very cool. Um, it also, I think, like I don't know how this happened, but you uh, you challenged me to watch all of his films. I think one night on Discord. And then I was like, you oh, know yeah. What? yeah, I can I can do that. I can watch all of his films, not knowing he had, like, a hundred fucking movies. <laughs> yeah, I think you're on about watching one random one from, like, late 90s or 2000s. But whenever you go through any director's filmography, like, if they have auteur status, like Mike does, then I always suggest going from the earliest point to the current point so you can see how they develop. I don't know if other people like it as much as I do, but it just gives me a really satisfying feeling watching them grow, like watching a little kid grow up into an adult, same kind of thing. Well, how many how many directors have you gone through? Oh, about 10, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. they haven't had really long filmographies, though. It's just been short stuff like david lynch and jackie chan and stuff like that so does uh does quentin tarantino count because <laughs> i've watched his movies as they came out basically yeah so that kind of counts stuff in order as well yeah that counts. yeah i guess i didn't have to go through it i just kind of lived through it as you know as i started watching movies um and also yeah. like um, I think Tarant- mm-hmm. no, go ahead i was gonna say um no, it's okay yeah anybody that uh you know listening to this knows i love the criterion channel and they sometimes have these oh, like yeah. <laughs> this like directors box sets and stuff like that. And I fucking love box sets. So the, I bought oh, yeah, this. I just um, bought the Zatoichi one. The Zatoichi one's great. Uh, TJ's, I think, watching that one from the co-host of 16 Ounce Cinema, TJ. And I, I think he's watched all <laughs> of them. Um, and I, yeah, I, I bought so. this. Uh, I forget her name. It's like Ingram Bergman or something like that from Sweden. Ingmar Bergman. Yeah. Berman, Bergbing, something like that. Bergman. Like, yeah. yeah. And I'm watch. I have her gigantic or his gigantic fucking film set to watch too, but it was a little bit too mellow. Yeah, I'd so love I kind of chilled that. out after I, five. Yeah, I've only seen Wild Strawberries from Bergman, but I thought it was amazing. I'd love to get the set, but damn, it's really expensive. Yeah, it is. I, like, Criterion always has these like 50% off sales. And then, like, if you order directly from them, they, they always give you like 10 and $15, like, dollar certificate things so it always kind of mm. yeah it always kind of yeah that's the it. problem you you can't do that in england you have to pay full price on amazon plus shipping Ugh. i talk to people yeah, from so like australia about movies up. sometimes and their fucking prices are disgusting I, i'm glad i don't live on an island <laughs> so <laughs> true everything all of our entertainment here is cheap so um mm, yeah that's so true. today we're gonna what what are we going to do? We're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about the history of uh, mm. basically direct video in Japan, which is called V-Cinema, I think. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. 
And then we're going to go through with his Takashi Miike's two, first two films, Lady Hunter and I Catch Junction. And, uh, yes, all are correct. What's Lady Hunter called? It's called Lady Hunter, the Prelude to Murder uh, or something? Prelude to Murder, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love murder. Who doesn't? That's why we like Takashi Miike. That's true. That's true. And... Uh, I heard you had a little history lesson for us about the uh, Japanese cinema, uh, which, which I know yeah, nothing just about. Yeah, so. a little <laughs> bit of history. Ah, uh, well, sit back and relax and take out a notepad. Cause I'm, I'm already sweating profusely, so I'm not sure I can relax, but, but yeah. <laughs> well, in order to learn about V cinema, we need to take a little trip back to post-World War II Japan. So, just a picture so of post-World War After we drop some bombs, Japan. I'm in there, okay. Yep. So, after Japan lost the war, they had a massive economic boom that lasted right up until the late 80s, early 90s, around the time um, the Cold War ended, which I think was like 91, 92, sometime then. Sean Connery film came out in 90, so probably like 90, something like that. So, today, we will be focusing Wait, did you use a Sean Connery film to date Japan. Japanese cinema? Well, yeah, you got to pick from different countries, different places. It's all part of one okay, big history right. lesson. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> Write down Sean Connery. That may come back later. Okay, right, so... I am writing down Sean fucking Connery. <laughs> so during 1980s Japan, the economy was in full boom and people found themselves having to pay full price for commercial goods and commodities. So like Nintendo came out in the 80s, home computers, home videos, stuff like that. And on top of... Tokyo being a major financial center that resulted in money, bank loads, and credit becoming way easier to obtain. And only 4.9% of the entire Japanese population were unemployed, which is pretty fucking crazy. And, um, yeah, so, 90 Japan was a pretty great place to be. Just imagine heaven on earth, and that's 1980s Japan. <laughs> apart, apart from having to pay All a right. shit ton. <laughs> Yeah, so Japan's economic growth abruptly ended at the start of the 1990s, which was called by the asset bubble prices, like retail and stock market being inflated. They just completely stagnated, which caused oh, um, no. Japan's yeah, it's pretty crap. Which caused the 90s to become known as Japan's lost decade, which is kind of ironic because 90s Japan is probably one of the best decades for cinema in Japan. So much great indie stuff came out in 90s. <clears throat> so and We're going to watch about indie... half of it, I think, going through his movies. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think he's got... I think Miki's got at least, like, maybe 18 V Cinema films. He just hammered them out. So... Now, is V Cinema still going, 80s. or is this like a time time capsule? Well, it's kind of a time capsule, and I wouldn't say many Westerners know about it unless they are obsessed with random 60-year-old Japanese directors from Japan like I am. <laughs> and you still get director video stuff, but it's just like picture director video stuff now, and it'll be like a Jean-Claude Van Damme crappy film like that. So the like glory days are definitely over. Um, oh, okay. In Japan, they have a lot of um, Pinku director video stuff, and um, I'm sure there's Is still that like the cheap shit you always stuff. fucking love. <laughs> yeah, I knew I'd find some way to bring up Pinku. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mike dabbles in a bit of Pinky shit later, but that's not for ages. Mm. So, back to my history lesson. So at the end of 80s Japan, the film industry was on the brink of collapse. It was completely screwed. Because the influx in home video sales made it so major studios couldn't make back the money that they invested on big budget features. So it's like now with Netflix and Amazon Prime and stuff, people would rather stay at home and watch that than go out and see some crappy Marvel film at the cinema or something like that. So because nobody was like working that. anymore or what that was like part of it no, no people are still um working but ju people just weren't going to the cinema as much because they could watch stuff for fr free in their own home because of the home tv market oh, okay. and home video sales yeah okay okay 
When did so Akira Studios come out? Just to like, so that's like the big Akira movie from was, Japan that got me into Japanese films. So, uh, that was Battle Royale for me, and um, Akira came out in 1988. I'm really good with okay. dates. If you ask me like a film date, I can probably, I mean a film, I can probably give you the date for it. No, yeah, and, that's cool. Uh, I see it right here. Yeah. Um, so studios forced to adapt and come up with a new way to make money, which led to the creation of V Cinema which was coined by the Toei Company, my favourite Japanese studio, who also did a ton of great pink films in the 70s. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, half of this is just going to be pink film, pink film, pink film, pink film. <laughs> yeah, so, so we're getting like a the... slight like pinku lesson until like we get to, to my, Mike's pinku phase, and then we're going to get like a full-on history lesson about pinku. Oh, believe me, I've already written the notes in my head for that, and that's like oh, that yeah. film's not like till twenty twelve as well. <laughs> I think way too <laughs> far <sorry>. ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, the V Cinema market was very popular in the early nineties and led to many fa- now famous directors getting their start. And they were usually assistant directors that the the companies chose. So, like Kiyoshi Kurosawa, who you might know as the guy that directed Pulse. Hideo Nakata, who did Ringu, and of course Takashi oh. Miike, who is arguably the biggest director to emerge from the V cinema scene. And uh, almost done with the history lesson now. So many directors chose to direct V cinema films rather than big budget features because it offered way more freedom and the, the censorship that I'm sure you know about in Japan Japanese films mm-hmm. was far less strict. But still there, but just not as strict. So they could get away with more stuff. And uh, V cinema was made w- way faster, like maybe a month you could pump out a film, maybe not even a month, maybe less. And um, <clears throat> it was a lot cheaper... And it focused a lot less on exposition and story and way more on hyper-violence and vulgar sex. Now, what about, like, uh, big-name actors? Did they go for it, too, or did they stick with their cinema? Uh, Big-name actors usually stuck with cinema, but a lot of now-famous actors were uh, born in, like, their careers were made in the V cinema. Like, Sho Aikawa, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, but he becomes, like, one of Miike's main actors in the V cinema Mm. for a while. And, um... Ricky Takeuchi, also not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, but he's really big in Japan as well. And you'll be seeing a lot more of him. So that's basically my uh, lesson on V Cinema. And there's um, there was like, you can count V Cinema companies on your hands like three times over. There was a shit ton. There was like um, Japanese home video that released um, the film we're about to talk about, I Catch Junction. And mm-hmm. there's um, KSS that did Bodyguard Kiba, The Way to Fight, Knack that did Osaka Tough Guys and Peanuts, excellent film that did New Third Gangster and Shinjuku Outlaw. And, so uh, directors yeah, would like jump studios some... all the time? It's not like uh, <coughs> oh, yeah. not like American cinema now? Yeah, Miike's um, very much a director for hire and still is now. He's never stuck oh, okay. in one studio or anything. Yeah. And that's basically Do all the directors my... like stick with the What's studios it? or is that like... An Americana uh, thing some, a little bit. Some directors stay loyal, but I think these V Cinema studios that were established by the bigger companies are mostly bust now. They might put out a anime OVA every once in a while, but mm. you won't really see much from them anymore. Well, some of the big ones you might, but not the lesser ones. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So that's pretty much my history lesson. I hope you enjoyed the history. I did enjoy it, and I already asked the questions. You already kind of answered my my next question coming up, which was, "What other histories uh, are we gonna get?" And it turns out we're oh, getting we're getting histories. Uh, Inko <laughs> histories. So that's good. Yeah, is there, you is get, there any hints of um, hentai? Did you say? Oh, no, I didn't. I was asking. I hope not. I don't. Oh God! So what, what did you say? I thought you said there's gonna be any hentai. I'm like, what? <laughs> no. Did, did Mike direct any hentai? Because I'd watch the shit out of that, I guess. Um, there's some animated segments in um, the Mole Song film, but it's not hentai. So he hasn't <laughs> not done any hentai that I know of. I'm but right yeah, Mike hentai sounds fun. So I think um, we're, uh, we're ready to roll on our first film, I think. Which is first, Lady Hunter or... Uh, uh, let's go with I Catch Junction first. It wasn't his first film but it was first one to be distributed and first on letterbox cool. so 
and I've got my notes for that first, so for convenience, let's go. I right have my uh, I have my line of notes, <laughs> and my, my oh, yeah, line of notes line is directly notes. affiliated with the uh, with the poster. For both of these are fucking great. It's like three schoolgirls, oh, yeah. and one of the girls is like pointing a gun to her head. And I know how much you love guns, Bjork. Yeah. So that's it made me think of you. Well, I I like Bjork. I mean, yeah, I like Bjork, but I like guns in films, but just like real life. I'm not sure why I'm so strict about that, but yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the girls are. This brings really up the question: Like, or, or is is your name Colum or is your name Bjork? Because uh, oh, every cause single going... fucking American calls me Colum. <laughs> no, it's not Colum. My actual name is Callum, but I think it's a real shitty name, so I just go by Bjork. <laughs> Callum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so fucking fun. Yeah, no uh, I'll go, Americans I'll go seem Bjork to too. heard of Bjork, Callum. Bjork is cool too. Because yeah, as I, I you know, when I when I met you, I just assumed you were like the chick in your uh, in your. I, I just I assumed you were actually Bjork. Because your AV oh, is yeah. uh, actually Bjork from you know your favorite actress or whatever. Well, I hope when you read my glowing letterbox reviews, you just read them in Bjork's voice rather than this uh, disgusting <laughs> British voice you're currently hearing. Actually, I don't I don't know Bjork's voice, so I gotta listen to some of her songs maybe after it's this. It's an Icelandic gotcha. accent, the sexiest accent. I, I I can't imagine I've ever heard it besides a Bjork song, which I've forgotten. So it'll it'll have to go. I gotta yeah, admit, okay. though, I do like your accent. So I don't, I don't know. You're selling yourself short well, there. Bjork. Everyone likes my accent, but me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so what is Icast Junction about? So, Icast Junction is the first film of me case that was released, and it's weird. It's very weird. You are free, sexy police officers oh it's like it's very like um uh, like sexual but like hilariously sexual nothing not not like yeah those, i guess those weird rape is... scenes are really funny <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't disagree no that um, plastic scene was pretty fucking hot dude i'm actually looking at a picture right now of like the woman wrapped in plastic and he's like oh, yeah. licking the plastic on her mouth and stuff like that. Yeah, I thought that, was, that was a pretty wild scene. Yeah, I thought that scene was pretty hot, I'm not going to lie. It's like to imagine, imagine you've how got big three it... notes than that big plastic JPEG that takes up half the page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, this is your first movie and you just plop your balls on the table. It's just like, we're doing this. Oh, this yeah. is what we're doing. You couldn't ask for a better introduction <laughs> to Mike or Mike's V Cinema stuff. It, I Catch Junction really does feel like a taster for what's going to come. Just imagine this, but crazier, weirder, more fucked up, more degenerate rape scenes. It's all coming full force. And so, so let me let me see if I cat this right. It's basically like these two female detectives. There's three of them. Yeah. But like two of them start like a gym or something like that, so that they can be alone from the perverts. Because every guy in this movie is just a giant pervert who loves watching women. Yeah. They start that um, ballet leotard club, and you see them in the sexy leotard outfits, and you just have the older cops licking the windows, nose bleeding <laughs> yeah. everywhere, like some kind of anime. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that was fucking great. I read that it was because like, like his first few films or whatever were based on manga. So, uh, so like oh, really? they all have these weird manga like exaggerated, you know, acting, exaggerated horniness, exaggerated humor, and stuff like that. Yeah, it definitely felt like that. We know Angels has the same kind of comedy as well, so that's something to look forward to. Hell yeah! I think they use the same van as the- well. The same van? Yeah, they, I think they drive around in the exact same van. He definitely has the exact <laughs> same um, shot of people driving in the van with the camera mounted on the front. That's pretty funny. I actually use um this website called Asian Movie Pulse. Oh, yeah, I know that, that website. That seems to have... Yeah, it seems to have like reviewed every single one of his films. So I was just like, just catching up. It's like, oh yeah, that happened. That's pretty cool. Which I can't, like you said, I can't remember from three weeks ago. So yeah, that's, makes me sad. That's so problem. so okay. So the the third uh, the third uh, the third what lo- uh, lady cop comes in and yeah. she wants to be part of the crew, but they're like, no, you have to do all these things before you become part of the crew, right? Uh, nope. Nope, okay. All right, so you tell <laughs> yeah, me, you tell you me about the third one. <laughs> to the final 15 minutes of the film, Mike. 
Oh, shit. Yeah, that was like the fourth scientist girl that wants to join that's been eavesdropping on them throughout the film. With her oh, no, no. Judges. I'm talking about the... I, I didn't know all three. I didn't think all three of them were like in the club. I thought there was only like two of them in the club and then they made the other one do like weird oh, karate and ballet and that, stuff like um, that. Tough boss lady and then there was that other one and they had to fight. Oh, okay, that's right. And then the third one had to, like, fight her to get in. And if she lost, she'd that's have to right. shave her head and look like a bald old man. Oh, I was rooting for that so hard. <laughs> really? Yeah, I love bald chicks. I thought you like pixie hair. Dude, I, I, it's just the shorter the better, all the way to bald. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Well. I Actually, that's the reason I have my stupid haircut, just because it's like, NPC if I, if I just kind of... Yeah, if I just kind of, like, close my eyes, I can pretend I'm a woman. So it's fantastic. Damn. I am learning <laughs> a lot about Michael tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so the film looks really low budget, obviously, because it... Well, it had no budget, pretty much. But it doesn't feel low budget, and especially for Mike's first film. Like, this is a legit, well-directed film. It feels very competent for, a, like, a f- debut feature, not counting Lady Hunter, of course. Sure. Yeah, and you, you really want to expect this from Mike, but I just think it shows how much of a natural-born filmmaker he is. And he, he worked with pretty big names as well as an assistant director for a few years. Um, I'm blanking on the name, but he directed... He mm. assistant directed the film Black Rain in 1989, and that's a pretty well-known Japanese film. So it, okay, it so he kind of he kind of worked his way up. Yeah, he, he he was actually comfortable being an assistant director forever and wasn't really bothered about moving up, but yeah, <laughs> I'm glad he did. And I Catch Junction... Wait, wasn't Black Rain the one with, like, one of the Douglas people? I have no idea. I've not seen the film, because the director's uh, on my uh, director's watch list, so I'm going to wait to go through his uh, filmography. Oh, there it is. You know, I looked it up. Yeah, the uh, another cool fucking poster. God, I love these posters. Yeah, Japanese it's just Michael Douglas looking posters. fucking sweet in like a leather jacket and like a cigarette oh, in his wait, mouth isn't and that black the Ridley sunglasses. Scott film? I mean, that sounds like a Ridley yeah, Scott was, film, but no, I don't think. Two, uh, oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. It is a Ridley black Scott film. Rain films directed in 1989. One Ridley Scott, which oh. I'll be avoiding, like the plague and the Japanese one, which looks good. Well, this one has, like, a Japanese bad guy in it. Oh, does it? Like, right in the poster, yeah. Oh. Well, m- I'm maybe a, I'll yeah, put this, this, with this is, this is actually. I'm actually going to watch this tonight if I can. This looks sweet. Well, maybe I'll put with Scott's meandering bullshit just for the Japanese bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess Junction is a very appropriate name for the film because there is a lot of eye candy if you remember any of the eye candy, Michael, apart from the weird... No, I remember you telling me about it, uh, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, nudity. There's a lot of uh, foot shots for me, apparently, which is nice. lots of pleasant soul shots, tit shots, vagina shots, lots of close-ups on all the naughty areas, which was (laughs) enjoyable. A British man saying naughty areas is just so, I I don't know how explicit we can be on the show, so... (laughs) Go all out, friend. Okay, there was a nice close-up on the lady's cunt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You said go all out. All right, so um, we gotta we gotta pull Bjork back a little bit. All right. <laughs> yeah, we'll be we, we back in. I, I know I'm gonna go too far. I need, I need restrictions and limitations. So, so, so okay. How, how is how is this playful uh, nudity and sexuality different than like a pinku film? Well, um, is it just like? all over the top basically it's somewhat similar to pinku but with pinku there's more of a focus on the actual sex and it's it's, it's difficult to explain it's like invisible borders that differentiate it i don't actually think they have okay. sex in pinku films i'm pretty sure they don't but well, the poster sure as fuck do yeah they're definitely explicit but i don't think they actually have sex because they are just actors not like proper sex workers or anything it's meant to be gotcha. sexual. It's not just straight up soft call porn. There's like, I I don't even watch it for the fucking nudity. I watch it for like the story. The story is usually really good. That sounds like a complete lie, but it's not. I mean, deadly serious. About yeah, that. that's why that's why everyone read Playboy because they had cool interviews. Oh yeah, Playboy magazine was way before my time. Mm, that's true. And yeah, for the what about Maxim? Listen, was that big over there? For the list was what? Maxim. Uh, we have Zoo magazine. I think that's dead now, though. 
Uh, yeah, we don't even I have think all magazines are dead. Here. So don't, yeah. for people listening, there's a bit of an age gap between me and Michael, so there might be like crap like this that <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's talking about, or he's like, what's this thing you're on about? How, how old are you? You're 21, right? Yeah, uh, 22. My birthday was last week. 22, okay. That's cool, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, I'm 37, so. Old enough to be my dad, but you're a cool dad. Yeah, if I was 15, I guess. Yeah. Started young. <laughs> Anyway, back to the film before we get too off topic. Uh Uh-huh. So, the soundtrack's awesome, and it's got that... I'm going to completely get the name wrong. Is he, like, called Steve Pumpkins or something like that? (laughs) Why would I know that? Is that Tom Hanks' character on SNL, remember? You you told me... Oh, yeah, that's that's exactly what it sounded like. Um... I'm Steve Plumpkins. It's like it's something pumpkins, yeah. Is it actually the music? So if, hmm? Is it actually the official music used? No, no, not at all. But it oh, just sounds exactly like I it. I thought it was that, legit stupid... the same music when I read your review. Oh, no, it. no. But but it totally had the same, the the exact same vibe. It wasn't even just like a hint of it. I'm just like, why am I hearing this shit? Yeah, I was but, uh, just picturing like some hardcore Takashi Miike fan working for SNL. And I was like, we need some music for the Tom Hanks <laughs> sketch. And he recommends this jokingly. He's like, holy shit, they're actually using it. They're actually going to fucking use it. <laughs> But it's like a, it's like a. Uh, besides that, it's like a big synth soundtrack, basically, right? Oh yeah, it's a really funky soundtrack. I really like it. Mm-hmm. Be cool to get it, but no one's gonna release the soundtrack. No, probably not. All the film. I, I'd actually love to get this on Blu-ray, but that's no chance it's getting a Blu-ray release. V Cinema is dead as far as physical media goes. All you gotta do is win the British lottery. You guys have a lottery, right? Yeah, but I don't enter. I think it's pointless. Oh, yeah. Some somebody has to win. Somebody could that's be you, not and you could, me. Then you could then you could <laughs> just release a Takeshi Miike film like once every three months on Blu-ray. That's Arrow Video's job. I'm hoping they'll release more. They had, last one they released was One Miss Call trilogy. That was quite a while ago. Oh no, they did um, yeah. Graveyard of Honor, but I don't like that film. Hmm. Oh yeah, once you once you got me to start watching these movies, I ended up getting a bunch of them on Blu-ray. Oh yeah, you got the Dead so, or Alive trilogy, right? Yeah, I got the Black Society trilogy. Oh fuck Dead yeah. or Alive. Fuck yeah. And then and then I got uh, what's the other one I got? I got First Love because Angus said it was great. Ah, Angus, a man of taste. Yeah, First man Love of is taste. A, oh, it's borders on masterpiece. It feels like such a love letter See, to his early two thousand stuff. See, that's the thing. Like, I I think I'm gonna watch that sometime soon no, anyway no, cause no, like no, I, no, I, no 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 don't watch that film soon well i said it's like I, i've fucking seen i've seen addition i've seen itchy the kill i've seen all his like recent yeah but if films, you he so. released like six films like a year in 2001 2002 yeah. 2003 and that yeah, first true. one's basically one big love letter to that entire period in his career and you'll get just so much more out of it if you're watching harder okay I'm, I'm glad i don't know angus angus hasn't seen any of that shit and he loved the fuck out of it so I, well, Angus might maybe I should maybe I should do this. I should watch it now without appreciation. Then I should watch it when it comes up with the appreciation. See what I like better. Ooh. Well, let me know uh, what you no think of you. it. Okay, and, okay. Well, yeah, it's no for me. But I'm strict about going through it order, so just let me know right, what you think right. about it when you go through. So the the leotard wearing police ladies decide to become crime fighters to fight crime because I think the men are taking all the crime or something. Something like that. Yeah, they're taking all the good crime like yeah, so they... CSI jobs <laughs> and, and they're pissed <laughs> about that shit. Yeah, so they get drunk and decide to form a secret eye catch club. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah and put their and then like this whole this like big uh, this big drama throughout the whole movie is like Somebody's stealing panties, right? Yeah, there's that panty thing. <laughs> they keep making fun of how ugly that one woman is. And when the male cop yeah. finds out, he's like, takes a picture of her, put this picture next to the panties, you won't have problems anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, the film's got a really great sense of humour. 
Like they've got an actual. Yeah, so they went to like like different women got their panties like stolen, right? There was this like really attractive businesswoman, and there was yeah. this like college girl. Yeah, it's a pretty big, pretty good gag. Yeah, I'm not so much sure why stealing panties though, because they've got like used panty machines in vending machines on the street of Japan anyway. I don't know if they had that in. Yeah, the but it's not the, it's not the same. You know, if you're taking it from somebody you know, you get that extra rush. <laughs> you can't. You <laughs> know, it's just like strangers' panties, of course, Mike. I'm just speaking for somebody who can understand the psyche of a panty stealer. You have gone inside the mindset of the panty stealer. Oh, yeah, (laughs) I've been in there. The world from his point of view. (laughs) I feel what he feels. Dude, every every time I see like I rewatch like Hannibal and all that shit all the time, and I'm like, I could do this for perverts. Like, if there's a pervert fighting crime. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. I've not seen Hannibal. That would make a good one. TV show. It's like a good TV show too. There's like a three, three season series that are that's like the, that's just really solid. It's almost better than like a lot of the movies. Yeah, hey, I'd watch it for Mads Mikkelsen. He's great. Oh my god! You haven't if you haven't seen it, it's fucking disgustingly like brutal. <laughs> and it was on like and it was on like you know America's TV airways like at 9 p.m. Mm. So like I don't know how it got away with any of that stuff. It got away with. Yeah, but I it's think really I'm going to watch the films first before I watch the show. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Let me know when you do that, because I fuck, I love, like, there's one with, um, the the one called Hannibal is fucking great. It's got, um, oh, man, my favorite, one of my favorite actors who I can't fucking think of right now. Emily Watson. But anyway, I love, I, I love, yeah? Yeah. She's okay. She has a weird okay. face. It makes me nervous. She's my favorite actress. Oh, that's fine. She has a weird face. No, she's not. She's beautiful. She has, she's beautifully strange she's, with she's, her strange uh, robotic she's face. She's the main actress in Breaking the Waves, my favorite film. Well, second favorite film. <laughs> oh, that's right. I gotta watch that. That's right. Oh, I hope you cry. Your figure eyes out, out. Figure out what makes you cry. Oh, I bet you'll be able to guess. It shouldn't be too hard. Oh, probably. Like the tears start at the back of the eyes, then five seconds later, it's full on bawling my eyes out. Oh, back of the eyes, not <laughs> me. Mine are always on the bottom. Oh, mine like go from the back, then to the bottom, then just flood. <clears throat> Oh, I bet that psychologically means something about us, like people who start crying from the back, or it could be I don't, I don't the know what they would be. Um, age difference, or it could be the location. Perhaps maybe the Florida sun is doing something to your theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's in. Uh, she's in the one called Red Dragon. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, Edward Norton. That's the one. Oh yeah, Edward That's Norton's who I love. Great. Yeah, the movie's fucking stacked. There's Edward Norton has Ralph Fiennes and it has Philip Seymour fucking Hoffman. I thought it was so. Ralph Fiennes. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. Fines. Ralph Fines and Edward name. Norton. That's like a Grand Budapest. Uh, yeah, same, same cast. Yeah. Oh, right, great movie. Yeah, I watched that yesterday. It was amazing. Darcy only gave me like. Oh, I guess six. actually, I uh, I guess I guess I did his 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 shit too. I watched all his movies. I fucking love that guy. Yeah, me and Darcy watched a bunch yesterday. She didn't like Grand Budapest though. She thought it was all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's very like random, but I like that kind of thing. Yeah, true. It's very good. I think it's his best film. Uh, I like that one with the train too. Yeah, that's Grand Budapest. Which one is? Oh, is it? Oh, <laughs> Mike, your memory, seriously. There you go. Uh, what am I thinking about the hotel one? Yeah, that's Grand Budapest. No, motherfucker. There's one, uh, the Darling Unlimited. Oh, I thought I was on a the, the oh, yeah, that's my train as well. That's a train yeah, one. Yeah, that's a that full-on one, yeah. train one. Oh, okay, that's good. It's like low key. It's like the beginning of him being fucking him. Ah, that's cool. I'll check out Vince. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah. So. With I Catch Junction, there is, of course, the obligatory me K rape scene, which is in practically every V cinema film. It's like he can't, he's not capable of making a film unless someone gets raped at least once. Well, that's it. This is just like his V cinema period, anyway. So there's plenty more rape in later V cinema as well. And uh, the rape in this film. The plastic one just goes on for ages and ages. Oh my! It is so long. Yeah. It's like at least I've, I'm thinking at least a solid three minutes. All right. So set the scene for us. Like, why? Who is this guy, and why is um, there a woman in the in, a, the in a bag? Yaku's a crime boss. This is when the film does that weird ass tonal shift from light-hearted, quirky panty stealer comedy to hardcore prostitution ring. People are dying. People are being murdered. <laughs> like. Someone got See, but the, the thing is, though, at least it, it like it, it makes sense because like you hear the women complaining about getting the uh, the panty thief crimes, yeah. 
And so they they just went straight up to like, all right, the big leagues. Like, here you go. Here's this Yakuza rape game. It's from like PG-13 to hard R in like five minutes. It's like you really Very do quickly. not see it coming. But it's... Yeah, it really was like PG-13. It really was just like yeah. kind of this, slapstick this crap's comedy. This like YouTube as well. There's like full blown yeah, nudity yeah. and plastic bag rape on YouTube. <laughs> I hope it don't get taken down. Though. I don't know where else I'd find the film if it got taken down. No, they don't care about stuff with a thousand views. That's like cinema. <laughs> so I think I think I think Mikay's all right. Yeah, hopefully. And um, that the final fight choreography was pretty good. Fight choreography and stunts throughout were pretty decent. Nothing amazing, but all pretty competent for like a first feature yeah and um they put their ballet yeah. i liked it i thought it was cool to I thought it was... the final fight as well the what they put all like their ballet oh yeah and they throw that little squeaky ball at the crime boss's yeah, head it, that was it was almost like a like an episode of um power rangers kind of oh yeah that's the way i felt because they're all, they, they have like weird different, I think they have different colors, don't they? And they throw different colored balls yeah, at them or like no? it's like purple, red, and green. I saw the yellow lights on Yeah, <laughs> fucking cool. And that's how they, uh, that's how they stopped the Yakuza rape gang. Yeah, it, it went like, so. hot, it went back to PG-13 quirkiness in like the final act. Well, final yeah. half of the final act. Yeah. And I, I like that. That's what, that's what, all, all the reviews like gave it like a tepid thumbs up for their female empowerment <laughs> which made me laugh but like yes. it's kind of true it's you know it's kind of true feminism did not exist so. until Takashi Miike came along <laughs> so it sounds like a, a, a double thumbs up about I Catch Junction from the both of us yeah I, I, and I like the I like they went back to quirkiness but I kind of wanted it to stick with Hardar until the end like I wanted the Yakuza boss to shoot them and kill them kind of like a lady well we get the uh <laughs> I was gonna say we get the hard R ending with Lady oh my Hunter, God, which uh, that which is a good segue. My <laughs> so uh, on this one, you made me rewatch it. Yeah. Uh, well, you you didn't make me rewatch it, but like I'm glad you, you did. talk about the ending so much. Yeah, I hype this up so much. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me uh, actually actually I'm back on the uh, Asian Movie Pulse website. They actually have a project called the Takeshi Mike Project. Oh really? And they have 105. They have 105 of his reviews from various uh, and various like interviews and stuff like that too. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna actually bookmark that right now. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I ended up watching the uh, the last 30 minutes of it. Yeah. Did you f- like tw- you know right before did recording? Did you end up falling asleep first time around, or is it just the? Yeah, I must have because like okay, so there's this part at the end. Uh, there's this really cool black guy named Eddie. Yeah, Eddie's a cool guy. Um, Eddie's sweet. It's fucked up, though, because, like, uh, I told Bjork earlier that he's not on IMDb. The IMDb is just, like, four Japanese women. Yeah, let's start a petition for Eddie. And, like, Find he's nowhere near it. Eddie is. Yeah. We need him on I wanna, the I wanna, We want him on the show. <laughs> um, so, anyway, there's uh, the, the very last Eddie scene happens where they're, like, in a car, and then he's like, hey, come, why don't, you know, I know how to treat a woman. Let's, uh, let's hang out. <laughs> hey, and then the, the Japanese that. main actress, like, starts talking to Japanese, but there's no fucking subtitles. Yeah. And so, like, I have no who idea what, what she said dub, to him. Dub this is the same guy as who, do, uh, not dub, subbed um, Eye Catch Junction, because it's that weird Comic Sans blue font with the oh, white yeah. water around it. God, that shit was so popular in like the late '90s, early 2000s internet. Oh really? Yeah, so I, I totally get where he's coming from on that. Damn, no, I'm getting a history lesson. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and he like just so anyway, that like the that... long exposition scene, he just gave up. Yeah. So what were you saying? He did, yeah. Yeah, what are you saying he gave up trying to get get some of that Japanese pussy? No, no not about the subtitle guy. He just gave up when, when oh, it came yeah. to the expedition <laughs> scenes. Yeah, Eddie gave up as well, I guess. Maybe Eddie was the guy. It's like somebody had a gun to his head and like he could only get it like through the first watch through. And he, he just kind of could whip out what he yeah. could. <laughs> Eddie might have subtitled yeah, that, the film. He, he speaks both English and Japanese. That was the only one I didn't like. I really wanted to figure to know like what she said. Like what she, what did she yeah, say to really Eddie? Cute. I really want I really want closure. My, yeah. <laughs> my dog walked in the room when it happened and he came and sat next to me and I legit said, Any idea what he's saying, buddy? <laughs> he just looked at me blankly. <laughs> Woof. Woof. <laughs> he just like exhaled. Um, <laughs> so one of the uh, before I watched the last half hour, one of the notes because the, the basically the beginning of the movie is where uh it's like 
two buddies like have a daycare in their apartment. Yeah, it's that um, guy <laughs> and, like, he served within the army. He randomly left the army to open up a daycare. Yeah. Like, With, like, his brother? Like, there was two of them, right? Yeah, his weird and, like, brother. I, I, I wrote, like, this is what happens when, like, the government gets out of the way of small business. And two <laughs> cool dudes can just, like, open up a daycare in their fucking apartment and everybody trusts them with their babies. Yeah, this, it's and definitely just, like, it, it, Imagine if, like, you and I tried to start a daycare in, like, in a fucking apartment oh, in New God. York. We'd be in fucking prison. Yeah, They'd fucking be like, fuck these shit. guys. Yeah, not in not in Japan though. If we move to Japan, we can uh, we can be babysitters yeah, for hire. I'd be a babysitter for hire. I'd play battle shit with a little kid. But then again, like uh, you know, what what happens? The fucking king of fucking Moldova steals a baby. Oh my God, so yeah. <laughs> that's so weird. But uh, in I don't even know where Moldova is. Is that a country? Like, isn't that like a like a, a like a? I have no idea where it is. I thought it was like an outlet of like the Soviet Union when the Soviet Union was still still around. Oh, it's possible. It's actually funny when um, me and Angus on the uh, woke as fuck. Yeah. Like we were talking about Britain, uh, and Angus was like, "You know what, man? I don't even know where the fuck Britain is anyway." <laughs> <laughs> and then surprise. I was just like, "It's like it's above. It's like above Europe somewhere." <laughs> So we spent like we spent like two minutes being like, like it's somewhere the fuck up there. He's like, don't listen to me. We don't even know where the fuck Britain is. I was just like, yeah, I guess you're right. It's on the left side of France. That's up. Is it? It's up on our uh, on our on our atlases. Oh right. Oh wow. Okay, Moldova is still apparently a country. That's cool. It's between the Ukraine and Romania. Hmm, Not sure what this guy was doing in Japan. I don't either. And why was he the fucking king? Yeah, good. lots of questions for Lady Hunter. This this <laughs> this film could be pretty damn confusing at times. And it's got when he's at the daycare center, he has the most coolest original transition is in all of cinema history when the kid gets pissed and throws the battleship board at the camera and it cuts. That was so <laughs> cool. I absolutely <laughs> love that. That was great. Yeah, he, he, he loves throwing shit at the camera in this film. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The action and stunts in this film are brilliant. They're really good. I'd be hyping him up a the bit. Best, I, th- the, I think the best part was the uh, terrible English. I think that's my favorite, you like, tell that, v that cinema. Woman had no idea what she was saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love so it. Funny. And like, it's like the movie stops just for them to speak English, and and then they go on with speaking Japanese again. Yeah, and it's um those Japanese um ladies who Eddie was talking had no idea what the hell he was saying, and that's what made it so funny. Like, yeah. I stabbed the guy in the eye. Ah, <laughs> you're so cool, Eddie. <laughs> Actually, when he's like, uh, the the like, uh, you told me to watch the last twenty minutes, but I watched the last thirty minutes, oh, yeah. and like Eddie tells this cool story about like him killing a guy in the war or something like that, that. Was and then he was just like, I looked down in my pants and it was wet. <laughs> Never forget. And then the two the two women were like laughing at him, and he's like, No, <laughs> because I came. Do you know what I'm saying? I came. <laughs> it's fucking hysterical. Yeah, Eddie gets serious when he wants to. <laughs> Alright, so walk us through the first hour of the, or fifty minutes of the movie. We, they they open up a daycare. There's a baby, and then the king of Moldova wants his baby back and steals it. Right? Yeah, the the mother. I think he, the king of Moldova ends up putting the mother in the hospital because she doesn't come to pick up her son. So the random daycare owner ends up taking the kid, who is now in his care because the mother didn't come to his old female army buddy's house. That looks like an. Ab- condemned building next to a harbour so that's a great <laughs> it totally place does. for a kid like it's probably got tetanus and um it, that's when it basically turns into Takashi Miike's Home Alone it's pretty damn cool <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a army a small army of men shooting the shit out of this little shack and they're just so incompetent it's great I love incompetent like henchmen it's great. It's, it's really fun, and it's that dude with the massive rifles compensating for something, but who cares, because that rifle is amazing. <laughs> it's got that big disc on the side that lets him see night vision, but which is like two pixels on a screen because of the quality. Oh, yeah. But it's still really cool. It's just turned into gun porn for ten minutes, and I was on the edge of my seat just screaming, yeah, 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 go, go. <laughs> it's awesome. 
Oh, we gotta talk about the poster too, because it's another cool fucking poster. This one is like straight up '80s. Oh, yeah. It's just like a woman in the bra taking off her sunglasses, yeah, and then there's like a gone, fucking Jesus. dude. It's just like a dude pointing a gun, <laughs> <laughs> just there for no reason, just pointing a gun. Yeah, I like how she has a top off on the poster as well, and not on in any time in the actual film does she take a top off. <laughs> Apart from when she just yeah, disappointing, the but... Outfit, but you don't see, it, I don't think. And she's got the shoulder length black hair, which is definitely appealing very nice and i definitely know I, I i i slept through some of this film because like i gave it like a bad review but yeah. i really liked it like the last 30 minutes were fucking riveting as shit oh, those last 30 minutes i won't push it to an 8 out of 10 easily i can't believe i only watched the first 20 minutes first time i saw it i gave up really yeah easily. I was, I was, I, I, that drops you from an 8 out of 10 to a 7 out of 10 human being to me <laughs> just watching the first <laughs> 20 minutes I of a film it. I, i'm disappointed in <laughs> myself for it as well I was i'll be honest though like i've been doing that recently like i think two films there's just like i can't watch this anymore i'm not getting any pleasure out of this there's it's no fine. reason to keep you going don't remember and... the films ones you watch them anyway so <laughs> that's that's that is a valid point what <laughs> I think it was the um, the uh, George Clooney remake of Solaris, where oh, I got yeah, like thirty minutes in. And I was just like, no, this is this is all I need. I don't we're we're done. I don't hear anything Soderbergh directed. I can't stand it. I think he's so yeah. Pretentious. After like, I think TJ told me that like I don't really like him anyway. And I looked at his filmography. And I was like, maybe I don't really like him anyway. Maybe I just like some of the characters yeah, and actors in his like films. His Ocean's trilogy looks fine, and the third one's got Al Pacino, and so I'll probably watch that. But lately, he dude, no, you should watch. They're fucking phone. amazing. He like shoots all his films on phone now, and it's just dumb. Oh, that's that stupid effect. Yeah, yeah it was a cool experiment, but it's like done three films on an iPhone now. He must have like some kind of deal yeah. with the company or something. It's weird. <clears throat> so, I don't know. They some of those people have like a like a tick about something. If they if they like it, they uh they just stick with it. He did direct um the Nick, which I've always wanted to watch, which was like a Showtime TV show uh, that had um who did it star? Oh, it started Clive Owen as this like eighteen hundreds like hospital worker or something it seemed pretty cool i don't think i know what the show is or who clive owen ah uh, clive owen is the guy from the movie children of men and inside man oh i have not seen either of them Ooh, they're both solid yeah, children of men oh i think he was in that uh-huh He's not one like action movie where he like eats a carrot and then, like shoots everybody with a gun. He's a carrot? <laughs> no, he he eats a carrot right. during one of the scenes. <laughs> he's not a carrot himself. That's that be that Rob Schneider. Joke. Rob Schneider is a carrot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Was that your American accent? I like that. Uh, that was my um, Trey Parker doing a voiceover accent. <laughs> oh okay. My American accent is like, that's... "Howdy, partner, fill her up." Wow. Would you like a hamburger? Honey? I like it. Like, that's my American accent. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's how you pick up your wife the first time you meet her. <laughs> well, just hey, you want a hamburger, honey? I uh, like, stroll over with my guns in my belt and whatever those things kind of like <laughs> in the back of the boots. Would you like a soda, honey? That would definitely get all of see. Oh, uh, the name of that action movie is um, Shoot 'em Up. It's pretty cool. It's just like a mindless, like, well, like it says, shoot 'em up action film. It was pretty sweet. Yeah, that might be decent. All right. So, back to Lady Hunter. Hell yeah. It's his first film, and it's the first time he explored nostalgia, which is one of his key themes. The two key Takashi Miike themes that he explores in a lot of his work are nostalgia and being an outsider. And as he goes on, he, they, they just keep getting better and better, and he just keeps developing the theme more and more, and it's just so, so good. And it's cool to see how he does it in his first film. He, he like does it lightly with the woman and the man having nostalgia for their army days, wishing they could return. Okay, I was wondering what you meant by that. I actually, I actually read that somewhere too. Like they were talking about nostalgia, and I was like, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But yeah, when, when you mentioned it that way, yeah, they did talk about their like. The heyday of them having fun or whatever yeah, it was back in the army. Brief in this film, but you'll notice the nostalgia themes the more as you go along. He's got like a entire film that's just nostalgia, young folks' nostalgia, and it's um, it's 
partly. But is there like any film that doesn't have nostalgia in it? Um. Like, I mean, not, not Takeshi Miike, but just, like, in general, don't, like... Well, isn't that how, like... that 80s throwback garbage is all nostalgia, and I really can't <laughs> stand that crap. So, nostalgia is, like... Yeah, isn't, that, isn't that just, like, a big way to build a character characterization? Don't they just, like... The characters get nostalgic about something, yeah, and then when, we, like... When you do, like, nostalgia, it often feels like it's soulless and coming from, like, a marketing place, like... Who remembers Wonder Woman? She's back and she's on the big screen. Come see her. You'll remember your uh, child. Yeah, no, that's that's dumb. But yeah. Yeah, Takashi Miki, when he does it, it's like more... You can tell he like, comes from a personal place. It's like really heartfelt and meaningful. Hmm. And um, the film he did later, Young Thug's Nostalgia, like takes um, inspiration from him as a child. It's basically the, the kid's Takashi Miki is a child somewhat. It's like what he did as a kid. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That's like top 10 Mika, I think. It's fucking amazing. Really? Yeah, it's really good. So. Guess we'll see. Yeah, eventually. We still need to watch Young Thug's Innocent Blood first before we get to the sequel. The nurse... No, the woman ends up disguising herself as a nurse. Old over's past wife whose son has been stolen. I don't know how I'm keeping up with this, but I somehow am. Hmm. And she... Puts on a nurse outfit. Mm-hmm, I don't mm-hmm, know why, mm-hmm. but the woman pretends to be asleep with her eyes open when she's there, and even after she leaves, it's weird. R- really weird. I, don't, I I legit do not understand what's happening in this scene. <laughs> Some exposition that didn't get subtitled again. And well, the whole thing was inconsistent. Like I, I didn't really catch what the fuck yeah, was happening, see, except that the child needed to be rescued. Rely on exposition, all out on action. And, um, yeah. <laughs> well, let's get to the fucking action. The, the fucking end scene. The end scene where she, uh, she's dressed like a fucking, like, she's dressed like oh, Sarah yeah. Connor <laughs> wishes she was dressed in Terminator. Like, she's that badass. She has a cool fucking leather jacket. She has, like, fucking cool gloves. Yeah, she, she's got she a big put, fucking cool gun. She goes to, like, gun. a random coin locker. And, and she, she just fucking out, kills like, everyone. Massive M16, <laughs> I think it is. It's so cool. <clears throat> yeah. Well, isn't there a scene where, like, somebody, like, uh, gave her the stuff in the locker or something like that? I can't remember this. Or told her to go to the oh, locker. Probably. All I remember is before the locker, she had the pistol yeah. on the dead army guy's chest who just died. Yeah, that was a pretty cool shot. Yeah. And then, so, at, at the end, I guess, like, they, they, they get to this giant yeah, warehouse somewhere, and they have this big shootout <laughs> where she, uh... Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. She just cool. like she kills it's all like of them. A, those bear traps. And then kill. like he gets four bear traps on him at once. Then he gets shot in the dick. There's blood all over the camera. It's so cool. I think it screams at the TV. <laughs> and, uh, and like it was, it was cool enough to not oh, yeah. make me think. Like, wait, how did she even set that up in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, it, 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 it totally like, flowed yeah, well in the movie. Creed, Hidden Blade. He just shot out of his wrist and he got around the neck of it. That was really cool. Oh, so okay. Well, so the the, the main Moldova? bad guy, the King of Moldova, like they have oh, this right. like he almost shoot. Yeah, yeah, that was him. So like. He, he he tries to shoot her and like mm. she catches one of his like uh henchmen and the dude you know shoots the henchman oh, yeah. and then like she sneaks away and shoots the king in his chest and then like the, he, she shoots him in the chest and the shoulder and like the neck <laughs> and then she's about to shoot him and he's like i want oh, one wish and she's like okay just <laughs> one and he's like no how about two <laughs> And so he, so he asked for a cigarette, and then he asked for something, and he pretended yeah, yeah. to fumble in his in his pocket, so she would like lean down, and then he'd like he he put a guarantee around her neck and tried to choke her to death, and then she uh, then she stabbed him with like his own knife, mm. and then he fell down like I thought he was dead again, but he's like, <laughs> hey, put my sunglasses <laughs> on, like, really I don't want to die this ugly. <laughs> at the beginning, to, like, one last wish. Yeah, so, just... like that really cool scene with the sunglasses. Yeah, it's felt a bit all over the place. Yeah, and then um, yeah, and then so mm-hmm. so she you know it's the little kids in the car, so she like saves oh them. Oh my god, the ending! And then and then you tell us the ending. Happy, it's a great ending. Great dancing ending, ending like I catch junction, everyone's happy. Well, then out of nowhere, the fucking bear trap guy comes in. I got shot in the dick, screaming like ah, 
Then he just whips out his massive gun and you don't see it, but he shoots, like he unloads a full magazine into the woman who has just been reunited with, with no no not kid. even the woman because the child's in the front of her so he he shot <laughs> yeah. through the child clearly to, to kill both of them <laughs> they are dead it's yeah. completely depressing it is like it doesn't hold back at all it's so damn bleak it and the guy has no dick i feel bad eyes. for him <laughs> yeah and he's crippled his arms and legs but somehow knows how to <laughs> aim and fire a gun accurately enough to kill a woman and I mean, that's if somebody shoots my dick off, I'll have a lot <laughs> no, of anger issues. So I might kill a child too. Shot. He's going on a rampage. Yeah, that ending <laughs> is beautifully depressing. I absolutely loved it. <sighs> so those were our first two Takashi, Takashi Miike films. Yeah. <laughs> Takashi Miike. Well, I'll get it right before episode yeah, five, and then fuck it up around eleven. Check. Oh God, I don't know. Um, I <laughs> so, uh, know. what are the next two films uh, coming up? I I think it's. Um... That's okay. Well, while while you sputter, I will I hop on um... the Takeshi Mike website here, and I will scroll down. Yeah, we'll and do it that is. What's the one after are we doing one? last yeah, run? One hundred million yen worth of betrayal and love. Oh god. Well, it's body. So how about this? How about we do bodyguard Kiva one, two, and three, uh, and then we well, circle to back to last run and Shinjuku Outlaw. All right. No, no. I was thinking we do the bodyguard Kiba trilogy together. Um. Why and then we do the. Uh, weapon, or we could do one. last run and Shinjuku Outlaw together, and then start with bodyguard. I thought it was like one of his first fall one. He did. Human murder weapon. No, I don't see that anywhere. Uh, check the letterbox and say it from earliest to most recent. Let me let me go on his wiki then. Oh, that's a great place for it. That's why I use the most. Oh shit! I don't actually use that very often. So let me. Damn. Uh, here we are. So, oh wow, you're right. Okay, so I catch lady. There's something in red that I can't understand. And then there's a human murder weapon, and then straight to we do bodyguard Kiba, and, and then Shinjuku weapon. Outlaw, and then the bodyguard Kiba. Uh, that 7 million yen film, that's early on as well, I think. I, th I think a that's his third film, actually. Yeah, okay. sounds good, and they both, they both don't have subtitles. Okay. Yeah, so let's do that, and the human murder weapon. <laughs> Oh, fuck yeah. I really like um, 7 million yen. Not sure Dude, about hell that. yeah. Are you going to rewatch them too? <laughs> uh, they're both on YouTube on the same channel that uploaded. Oh, you might have to. Did you link me uh, a human murder weapon? Yeah. It should be easy to find. Oh. Very yeah, cool. Definitely should be. So if anybody is, uh, is following along, this is all on no, YouTube. I haven't seen any of his um, <laughs> assistant directed films yet. But they're all on my watch. So list. have you seen Shimanto River, where he's the first assistant director? <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. That'll, yeah, that'll be that'll be our offshoot. Uh, offshoot, uh, whatever. <laughs> yep. <sighs> okay, so I guess this has been a 16-ounce cinema's presentation of Takeshi Mike with me, Mike, and you, Bjork. Ooh, cool. uh, hopefully before this pops up we'll have we'll have well we'll have a feed we'll have some sort of website maybe we'll have some sort of graphics and everything we'll have some shit up and people can follow us or something and uh, with that being said we have a 16 ounce cinema's main video movie feed thing is coming back soon I think in two weeks we're going to record some more shit, and our episode is going to involve... I don't remember, because usually I'm not the one remembering this on the podcast. Dolph Lundgren. It's going to feature Dolph Lundgren. Are you a fan of you Dolph? his name wrong as well, Mike. Do Dolph? What's his name? You say it. Dolph Lundgren. What did I say? Lundgren, something, something like that. Whatever, we know who he is. Yeah. All right. Rocky Fall, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, till next time.